What's going on guys? I'm Fuller with Custom Offsets, Custom Offsets TV on YouTube. We've got Steve here and you've probably never seen Steve. At least I would assume that you've never seen Steve. So Steve actually works over at Fitman Industries, but he was a great candidate for this video because Steve is, uh, I don't know, what do we say, addicted to movies or just you know everything about every movie ever? Uh, no, we can just call it what it is. I'm just, I'm, I'm the in-house movie snob. Yes, that's, that's probably the most accurate. Steve actually used to work at a theater too, and then, uh, now he's, I would say a videographer, but I think that doesn't do it justice. He's more of a cinematographer. He makes, uh, some pretty sweet stuff. So, we're gonna jump into it. We're gonna look at, I think we got four, five, six different movies we're gonna take a peek at, and, uh, we're gonna look at some of the most famous trucks from movies. So, let's open it up with the first one. Uh, Ironhide, which I don't know what this movie is from. Oh, Transformers. Transformers. Yeah, yeah, see? I'm just, I'm worried that I'm not going to know, like, any of these things. <laughs> no, you're fine, you're fine. So, um, we're looking at a massive GMC uh, Kodiak, I believe is what they called these trucks. Yeah, a C5500, 5500. Yeah, it's a big boy. Um, now, have, Parker, have you ever seen one of these in person? Yeah, I've seen these trucks in person. I thought you were gonna ask me if I've seen the movie, and I was gonna have to embarrassingly say no. Oh no, that that's that's totally fine. I mean, the the, the Transformers movies, if you watch them, they're more of a guilty pleasure than anything, I would mm. say. Um, but the thing that I like about this truck is that like it's it's so huge like you don't realize it until you're standing next to it in person but i mean i'm i'm not the tallest guy in the world but like the hood still sits up higher than me yeah these and things are absolutely massive. massive yeah i've actually saw um uh, there was some guy like pulling around a regular camper with one of these which i think it's a little bit overkill you know for like your your 30 foot tow behind but it's absolutely, absolutely huge or like I know a lot of guys in the big like offshore uh, boat racing community, like they run trucks like this because you're pulling, you know, a 40 or 50 foot cigarette boat or something like that, then you actually need it. But it is pretty sweet because like from the back, it just looks like a really tall, you know, GMC Sierra and then you just have a massive cab and it's really more similar to a semi than it is to, you know, a pickup truck. Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely looks like that from the back. It's like you see it from the back and you're like, what is going on there? What is up with this truck? And then you start to get around to the front and you realize that it's literally how you describe it. It's basically a, a semi on the front end of a of regular pickup bed. Yeah, exactly. Massive front bumper too, this road armor bumper. It's got a winch, it's got all the lights. It's a pretty sweet build. Yeah, I really like uh, just like the little minor attention to detail with things like that, like how they got like the winch kind of hooked off on the side and everything and the the bumper the front bumper and the rear bumper just adds that extra aggression that i think a truck like this needs um this is one of a very few vehicles that i enjoy seeing it all blacked out like this um, yeah being a being a car guy it's a a thing amongst us where we kind of feel like we lose detail in black wheels but like with this car or with this truck it's just it's such a dominating, commanding thing to see on the road that I think just being all blacked out fits it perfectly. Like if this thing is coming up behind you on the highway, you're gonna move over. So let's jump into the next one. Uh, this is from The Expendables. This is Barney's Custom 55 Ford. This thing's clean, old school, satin or matte black. Yeah, this is um, th th his old uh, 55 Ford. This car does not have uh, a, a great, it's clean until the end of the scene that it's in. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm watching it now and it's getting all shot up and full of bullets. Yeah, I mean, like, you, when you see it pull out for the first time, I mean, it's definitely one of those things that you're like, wow, this is a clean, sweet looking hot rod. It definitely sounds good, it looks good. It's it's not, it's one of those trucks that it's, it wouldn't serve it justice to be lifted. It definitely sits better lower to the ground. Oh yeah, 100%. Um, but then you know 30 seconds later it's you know getting shot up and everything i this is i i don't know i just the the flat black it again like it's it's really really cool with this with this truck i just i wish it didn't i guess get ruined yeah but that's what happens in movies it's crazy like all of the money and budget that goes into 
uh, cars for movies. And a lot of them, you know, nowadays they'll like build these tube chassis basically and they put skins around them so that when they crash Ferraris and Lamborghinis and Koenigseggs, they're not really doing it. They're crashing a car that looks just like it. Um, but I don't know if that's the case here. I don't know if that <laughs> they did that or not but this truck to start off with very clean love the black color and then he just has um you know like the chrome accents on there with the headlight bezels the bumper uh a little bit on the side and he's got like a polished lip around the the edge or the rim of the wheel kind of pulls everything together super nice yeah i mean you get this this like just looking at the front end of this truck it's just I mean, even though it's all beat up in the shot, I'm looking at it, it still is just, it's just an amazing vehicle. And it definitely shows that, like, even though these guys are, are big action stars that you would not think really know much, somebody in the production of this movie had respect for a vehicle enough to make sure it was something cool that the main character could drive. This is 1985 Toyota SR5 Extra Cab. This is Marty's truck uh, from Back to the Future. So this is one that I have seen at least a few clips of before. Uh, the DeLorean is obviously more famous maybe than, than the truck here, but it's, I don't know. I feel like this is every, uh, every middle-aged man probably had this. Like, I, like Sean is obsessed with his Tyco Bandit little remote control truck, and this just looks like it looks like a real life remote control truck. And he's got the KC lights on it, which is just like classic for the time period. Um, and it's, I don't know, it's cool. Like I would still own this today even. Yeah, I mean, the, when we brought the, when you when you guys sent the link over to this one, I was like, oh man, this this is the truck we're gonna be talking about. Like this is really, really cool. Like I, I, easily my favorite vehicle out of what we're reviewing here today. Um, Back to the Future is, is one of my like all-time favorite series of movies and this was cool back then and is still cool now um, and, and it's just it's it's awesome like it's it's got that that retro look it looks like it could go anywhere you know the street the trails the yeah. beach I mean I, I I mean I would I would drive the I would drive it everywhere it is absolutely everywhere and I, I love the old Toyota pickup designs like they like um I know this isn't this is related to this a little bit but the the Toy Story Pizza Planet truck I was just is, gonna bring that up <laughs> it's so cool and this is the same body style as that and it just and so I mean naturally there's a love for it there but this one this one just has that that mean sort of aggressive look I mean you got the push bar on the front with the KC headlights both in the front and in the back with the the roll bar in the back like this thing yep. is is ready to go and ready to have some fun with and i really really like the, the that whole look of it like trucks should look like they're fun yeah four-wheel drive toyota manually shifting transfer case it's a manual transmission like it's just i don't know it's like what every it's what i would have wanted as a kid and like still owning it now would be really exciting for me it's got the manual locking hubs and it just it looks yep. fun and it's sweet to see uh this typical this uh video that we're watching this example of a video that we're watching it's like showing clips from the movie and then now showing the guy who owns it and drives it around now and it's uh it's just like been perfectly um you know not what am i mm -hmm. <sighs> yes I, I, the word I, I can't think of the word i'm looking for preserved that's what it is it's been preserved it's uh still in the same shape that it always was in i personally like the truck more than i like the delorean again i've it's, it's i'm not just saying that I, i've literally been like that since i was a little kid i've always thought the truck was cooler than the delorean fun fact i don't know if you know this steve but there is a guy who has a delorean in appleton where we are that is all done up like the back to the future car i don't know if you've seen it before all right let's take a look at the next one uh paul walker's ford lightning so the Lightning is, this is the, the second generation of Lightning, so it's a little more rounded body style as compared to uh, the first one. Basically a performance oriented F-150, regular cab, short box, uh, they came lowered from factory, made a whole bunch of horsepower, not necessarily by today's standards, but in 2001 or two-ish roughly, uh, it, was, it was quite a bit. Side exit exhaust too from factory, which was awesome, uh, and it was just like, the first really fast truck 
in the early 2000s that, that people latched on to. Because you had the GMC Cyclone before this, um, but then that got discontinued, and Ford was trying to still hold on to that performance uh, pickup for a while. Yeah, I mean, the, the one thing, the, this this truck to me will always be iconic as you gotta you gotta slam into the the parking curb when you when you come to a complete stop uh like paul walker does in the movie but it's still one of those trucks that it's like it's it stands out you notice it like i really really like the wheels that are on it like it it definitely sets off the right look for the car with that more rounded uh body style that it has um the only I think thing I would say that I don't like about it is the front bumper's a little much. It's, yeah, it's, it's kind of like loud for me. It's almost uh, like too fat. It's too bubbly. Like it goes out a little bit, like a chin that sticks out too far, and then it hangs down a little too. It's just like if they would have just dialed it back just a little bit, uh, I think it would have right. did the truck some justice. Because watching these shots where it's drifting around. It looks great, and then you catch the angle where it's perfectly, you know, perpendicular to the camera, and you can just see how far that front bumper sticks out. So, very yeah, minor thing, to, but, you know, it's just, if we're going to pick on it, that's what we're going to pick on. Yeah, otherwise, I can't really say anything negative about the truck. I mean, it's it's one of those things that if I, had I, have I, had I seen it in person, I definitely would drool all over it. I mean, not just because Fast and the Furious, but because it's just, it's a great looking truck, and it was probably, this truck was probably what introduced me to the Ford Lightnings for the first time because I don't think I had seen any prior to that and um, and then a few years later I actually got to ride in one um, at uh, an apartment complex that one of my family members worked at there was a resident that had a, a blue and silver one it took me for a ride and at the at the standard of the time yeah they were super fast I couldn't say now but I mean it was definitely it was one of those things where it was like hey I'm, I'm in a Ford Lightning this is freaking cool and they look um, they look and sound really good except and the, the front bumper yeah and the thing is like this truck is now 20 plus years old but if if you saw one driving down the street it would still catch your attention and that i think is what i love about the ford lightning last truck here this is an iconic one now this movie i've seen as well i, I guess i saw fast and furious too but the <laughs> the cars movie of course the cartoon movie and this is the one that i have actually watched uh Mater. I mean, how how can you pick anything else? This one had to I make mean, the were, list. You were what two or three when this came out? Oh, I don't know. Is it that old? It can't be that old. <laughs> I I don't know if it's that old. It's pretty old though. I'm looking it up. Um, let's see. 2006. Okay, so I would have been in sixth grade. Wow, that is a long time ago though. I graduated high school that year. Steve, now everybody knows how old you are. <laughs> if they can do math, mm -hmm. then, they, then they know. It's fine. So, Tomator, rusty uh, tow truck. But, you know, if this was in real life, and I think I, I think there's been people that have like made a real-life version of Tomator. I've seen a couple photos before. But I actually I love the old-school patina look, like the C10 that Brandon Title just built. Um, yeah. I don't know. It's just cool. Especially like the green color that they have is awesome. And Mater's got a little bit of green on his doors too. He's very rusty. The uh, the C10 wasn't quite as bad, but it's just, I think a patina truck just looks really cool. I feel like the truck definitely, it, it, it has that, that, um, that charm that fits the, 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 the Western desert setting that he, that he comes from. Mm -hmm. And I think I really enjoy that. Um, cause I, I have a huge infatuation with like the desert and out West being a photographer and everything. It's just, that's where that comes from. But, um, the truck, however, it just, it, it breathes, it lives and breathes that. And even for an animated vehicle and being, you know, sort of that, 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 you know, hillbilly redneck sort of deal with the, uh, Larry, the cable guy voicing him. Yeah. It's still, the, the truck is still cool. Like it's still a cool truck to see. Like if you, and if I saw somebody try to do one in real life, especially trying to get the patina to that level of like, if they were trying to go as accurate as they could, um, while keeping it real like that would be really, really cool to see in person. I mean, just, just the little things of like 
the headlight missing like yeah the headlight awesome. missing it just adds to the personality and like the hood being gone i feel like totally fits it and you know credit to the animators too they really paid attention because even if you look at the tires uh, they animated the tires to be worn out already like the center section yeah. is just is there's no tread left so I don't know. There's a lot of attention to detail. Obviously, this is you know created using a, a computer and drawings and whatnot, but um, it's still a I don't know. It's still a cool looking truck. I would drive one of these around for sure. There's just something about driving old vehicles too, where like even mm -hmm. like my truck is it's not that old. It's a 2004, but it's just it's very it's got crank windows and it's a manual transmission and it's you know a little beat up but you just drive it you roll the windows down you play the country music and it just takes you to a different place and i feel like if you're driving this tow truck you'd be in the exact same kind of experience while we're on the topic of movies i don't know if you know this but i actually own a 1972 volkswagen beetle that was painted to look like herbie and although it wasn't technically period correct because i think herbie was a little bit older that was such a fun car and it, it was amazing because driving it around town i had people walking on the sidewalks that would like you know stop and say hi or wave or filling it up at a gas station people would be like oh my god i love this movie uh one time i was driving and there's a lineman up on a, a telephone pole and he's like yelling at me like hey cool car and it's just yeah. i feel like driving something like that like if, if you were driving tomater you'd get the same kind of uh reactions from people and that's what it's all about yeah i mean i and i 100 percent believe that when um when Corey and Mario from Fitment Industries went down to uh, Atlanta uh, two years ago to get the uh, BMW E30 that Fitment Industries has, mm -hmm. they were getting all types of thumbs ups and people coming by and saying sweet car as they drove by and they had all this video footage of it and that was really cool to see. Um, yeah, something about old cars that people have an appreciation for. I feel like there was so much more thought put into vehicles, you know, 40, 50, 60 years ago. Now we just slap a whole bunch of plastic in there and 3D print and injection mold everything and it's just like boom there it is i mean it, yeah it's, a, it's a, at this point in time it's like when one car company figures out something that everybody likes like like the little led strip in your headlights now everybody right doing that as like a oh that, i could go off on a tangent about that and talk about it for 30 minutes of how upset i am about a different company stealing that but i won't uh so Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed that. If you want us to keep doing stuff like this, we possibly, maybe, will, if you uh, let us know in the comments. Always make sure to like, share, and subscribe. I think that should do it for today. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, thank you guys. It was uh, definitely a pleasure being on, and thank you for uh, inviting me. This was fun. You're welcome. Peace.